a lot of riders, a lot of people have sprained one ankle, for example. Yeah. So they have this, if you look at the moving towards you on a horse, yeah. one ankle would be different to the other. Uh, the left ankle looks weaker. It's the one you're also inclined to use the most. So when they're doing rising trot. Yeah. It so they're collapsing them. through the ankle and it's not collapsing. Yeah through the arch yeah because humans we're putting our weight and our force through the balls of our feet in the stirrups and then coincidentally the ankle is the first joint of movement the ankle is fundamental in terms of how the body moves from the ankle upwards so if there is any lateral deviation of the ankle all of a sudden, that means that you are destined to then rise asymmetrically. Okay. I thought I'd done a little bit of voodoo uh, a couple of weeks ago when I just put a, a rolled up shim or pad under the femur where the saddle's yeah. neck support the rider. Yeah. And that corrected the ankle stability. And I need to fix the rotation on your left hip. So just come to walk a moment and then with your left hip, let's see if you can rotate it a little and see how that feels with the padding. Yeah. So rather than bring the right hip back, bring the left one forward. Left one back or forward? Right one forward. Uh, well, no, left, left one is back. I want the left one forward. Because okay. that that's your weak one. Let's see how we can alter that r left side. Now, do you want me to take the right pad off you? Yeah, yeah I'm not as keen on the right. Okay. How does that feel? Yeah, I feel even now. Feel even, wow, okay. How do your ankles feel now that I've padded the left? Yeah. Do you think we've quietened them down? Yeah. I think so too but it completely resolved that issue so just really getting the others to definitely make a point of looking at ankles oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the ankle there's various laws which einstein and various people have kind of talked about but equal and opposite reactions yeah so, the ankle is, as I say, you're, you're pushing off the stirrups, which then is the first angle or the first joint of movement and, and how it compresses and takes up the weight of the rider. Now, that equally also happens up at the femur as well. So you've got the yeah. two ends of the pelvis and the ankle are the two most important areas. Now, I, I generally kind of go, well, the ankle is more important than the, the, the femur. Um, because there's the, the femur and everything is is really complex and that's when you're when you're talking about femurs your and femur angles you're then also got to talk about pelvis shapes and then you've got to if you're talking about pelvis shapes you've got to talk about lumbar back the lower back structure <laughs> in terms of lordotic or kyphotic position you then got a little, a little advanced for us. Yeah, yeah, no, no. This is this is what I mean. It, it gets it gets lovely and complex, but it's it, because yeah. because everything knocks on to each other. So, for example, just bringing it back, you can see on the picture onto the right how the pelvis has dropped on one side. Now, what's going to happen at the ankle is the ankle's going to collapse, and it's going to then become more unstable. So, by correcting the hip you're then going to correct the ankle lower down. Mm. So what you did in that saddle is spot on. When we put both supports in, I really didn't feel, think I needed this side. Okay. So this side feels just normal now. It right. Feels natural. So yes. So with that, and that then helps me to push my left hip that instant bit because I had more contact. Right. So the support of the saddle underneath is yeah. allowed me to do that little. Yeah change okay so padding you helped you to rotate your hip yeah wow that's really good and then we having the padding under the thigh stabilized your foot yeah your ankle Definitely. okay so <laughs> you've won a piece of padding <laughs> okay. and then equally you would also then correct the ankle to correct the hip 
So you could do then but vice versa. So it's not just as simple as sitting in a saddle and giving the rider a comfy saddle, because I find that if you give them comfort, they settle into their own compensations and asymmetry. I've got yes. a couple of questions here. Lots of long riding boots limit ankle flexibility. Maybe yes. we're not so much looking for flexibility. The difficulty is is the optimum position to put the foot into because ultimately you want the foot horizontal. There is an argument to be had because humans, um, especially in Western culture, we are not as flexible as we should be. Okay. So in Western culture, we sit quite a lot, but we sit in a very comfortable chair position, which means that when we sit down in a chair, our head and our hips and our pelvis are in vertical alignment, but our feet and our ankles are pushed forward. Yeah. And we correspondingly then get shortening and tightening into our hip flexors and various things like that. Now, when we do bring our feet into alignment, such as when we're riding properly, head, hip and heel are in vertical alignment, you will find a lot of people complain because they cut, they don't have natural flexibility into the hip flexors. Yeah. So, and that's because of Western culture, because we're so used to sitting in normal chairs or theoretically normal chairs that we don't have natural flexibility onto our hips. Now, the problem is, is then if you bring the hip or the bring the ankle into vertical alignment, if they have a shortening into their anterior muscles which are the quads and the psoas and various things like that they will then anteriorly rotate the pelvis which will then make the rider feel like they're leaning forward and make yeah. them feel insecure yeah so you've then got this problem because of and it's not a problem because of the structure it is a problem because of the lack of flexibility